Hi everyone, happy Sunday. I hope you're having a great restful day and thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you're gonna have fun with me today. I'm gonna be painting with Paisley, which is one of our brand new 11 colors that we have just released. It will be hitting store shelves in North America July 17th. This is the gorgeous color right here. It is so, so pretty. It's such a pretty blue. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like in comparison to a couple of other colors that you may already know. We have over here on this side, Champness. And then over here, we have Pebble. So Pebble is definitely more of a gray. And then Champness is a brighter blue, but you can kind of see next to the bright Champness, this is more of a softer, grayer tint uh, of a blue. It's a real French blue, I find, really, really soft. And then you can see how how the depth is compared to a lighter gray color. So this is Pebble and this is Champness and our brand new feature color that I'm gonna be painting with today is Paisley. I'm gonna be painting this door behind me and I'll show you all the prep steps that you need when you are painting a Naughty Pine door like this. And yes, tell me what you think about this color so far. And if you haven't seen all the colors, I'm definitely going to show you all of them right now because they are just too beautiful. And I wanna make sure that you see these. All right, here we go. 11 brand new gorgeous colors hitting store shelves July 17th. Let me show these off to you because they are absolute stunners. We have a bunch of neutrals that we're coming out with. So let's go with those first. Amazing, amazing. Here we go. So four new neutrals. I think you can never have enough of them. And uh, one of my favorite ones is Victorian Lace. That's this color right here. It's a super bright color. It's um, got a bit of a cool and warm tone to it, which is awesome. So you have a really nice blend of the two and it, it kind of works in every scenario. So that is a really nice neutral white color. And then here next we have Cobblestone. It's more of a gray neutral. And we have after that one, I'm just gonna double check, make sure I don't mix anything up. This one is Chateau, super pretty. And then we have Cashmere. So I painted with Chateau yesterday on a live video, but you can see all the different tones when they're all side by side. Some have a little bit more yellow warm undertone, some have a more cool undertone. This one's really neutral. The Cashmere is one of my favorites. And then Victorian Lace. So these are really super pretty. You can pre-order these now by contacting your nearest store. So head on over to FusionMineralPaint.com, check out where to buy, just enter in your city or your state, wherever you're from and it'll help you find your nearest retailer. We have over 1,500 retailers worldwide, so you're able to grab this paint in over 30 different countries, which is awesome. Hello, where are you watching from? We've got Mitzi from Virginia, Debbie from California. This is amazing. I love how everyone's joining me today. Mist, this color is really cool. It's kind of like a periwinkle blue color. I am so excited for this one, and when you compare it directly to a super bright, oh, that's not our super bright white. Where is it? Here we go. Compare it to our super bright white. You can see how much of a pop of color this is here. Really, really awesome. Yay. Then we have rose water. I painted with that the other day. Love this color, really soft, beautiful pink. If you wanna see what these colors look like side by side, head on over to our website and click on the new colors tab and you'll be able to see what certain colors look like next to other colors of ours that you may already be familiar with. We've got eucalyptus here and bellwood, two beautiful sages. Eucalyptus is a lighter version and bellwood has a touch of blue in it. And then we've got this stunning, stunning hazelwood. This is a really deep color, it's beautiful. It has a warm undertone instead of a cool blue. So it's really nice that you'll get, um, instead of having like soapstone that has a blue undertone, now we have a different version of something like that for you. Ooh, Vernon BC, hello. Hi from Texas, Lynn. <laughs> Amazing. Then these are two blues. I think you can never have enough blues. They're super pretty. Today I'm gonna to be painting with Paisley and this one is blue pine. We're gonna to get to this one in a couple of days. Love blue pine, really nice deep rich blue and very pure in color, which is nice. And then Paisley. So we've got Paisley here. 
and just a little bit of history about why we named this one Paisley and all the colors were actually named by my sister and she's kind of helping us with creative direction and she works in social media. She's usually the one answering questions on Instagram and uh, yeah, so Paisley is actually an ode to our heritage. Our heritage is Scottish. So there's a little town in Scotland called Paisley and that is why we decided to call this one Paisley, just as a little nod to our heritage. So yeah, this is fun. All right, so many great people. Toronto, hello. The UK, oh my goodness, loving this. I just can never, I'm always like, I get those little pinch me moments with everyone watching from all around the world. It just, I don't know if I'm ever gonna get used to it, but thank you so much for joining me on your beautiful Sunday here. All right, so Paisley, let's get working with this. We've got this door behind me. It's a pine door. So when you want to prep a pine door with knots on it, first you're just gonna make sure there's no dust or dirt or grease or anything like that. That's important. Um, but with bare wood, there isn't often anything like that. Maybe a little bit of dust so you can wipe that off and make sure it's not there. And then if you wanna block these knots from coming through, then what you could use is a shellac-based primer and you could spot those areas if you wanted to. I actually don't mind the knots coming through, so I'm not going to prime it. Um, for one, it's one less step. Two, I don't mind that sort of rustic look and the wood sort of coming through down the road. But if I got sick of it down the road and I didn't like it, I could spot it again and then go ahead and paint over it again if I really wasn't happy with it. So don't worry if you make that decision, you don't have to uh, you know, be sad that you didn't prime it right from the beginning. So I'm gonna take this off. Do, do, do. A little bit of tape so I don't get it on this beautiful hardware here. I'm gonna pull you in nice and close. Whoopsies, we're moving the camera. There we go. This camera is a funny thing. I bought this um, interesting little device that helps me move the camera all on its own. Like if I move somewhere, it'll kind of follow me, which is interesting until it kind of does some wonky stuff. So yay. Oh wow, someone's watching from Greece. That's beautiful. Hi from Wisconsin. Thunder Bay, Calgary, Saskatchewan, Iceland. Oh, I love Iceland. I got a chance to go to Iceland um, about a year and a half ago, just six months before COVID hit. And I have to tell you, one of my favorite countries I've ever visited. I've been to about 30 countries around the world, uh, backpacking mostly on, uh, on a very shoestring budget. And I have to say, it's a lot of fun to do that. So if you get a chance to travel, oh my goodness to try the different foods, learn about the different cultures in the world, I definitely recommend it. Hey, London, Ontario. Hi, River and Oak. <laughs> Good to see you here. I don't know if you know, uh, London, Ontario is actually my hometown. I'm not sure if you know that. But yeah, I was born there. And then I have grown up in Toronto for most of my life, um, actually all of my life. <laughs> And, uh, but I've done a lot of traveling around the world, which is why I really like to find out, hey, where are you from? Where are you watching from? Someone from Portugal is watching. I got a chance to go there a couple of years ago. Beautiful, beautiful country. Love it so much. Hey, from Timmins. Wow, nice. Love it. Wisconsin. Oh, wow. Fabulous. All right, so if you're just joining me here today, uh, right now we are working with Paisley. Paisley is a really pretty blue color. It is a more vibrant color, but it's got a little hint of a gray tone to it. I'm gonna be painting this door with it, and I'm going to be showing off our roller to do this, and a very special brush as well. So, these rollers are my favorites. This is a one, uh, so this is the Stahlmeister roller, and it's a velour roller, and I just love it so, so much. It's really beautiful to work with. Oh my gosh, someone's from, from Instable, Turkey. I've actually always wanted to go there and haven't had a chance yet, and Holland, and South Africa, this is incredible. Thank you so much. Port Stanley, hi, Anne. <laughs> Minnesota, Sacramento, California, Maryland. Another from Thunder Bay. Oh, beautiful, Breslau, Ontario. All right, so I'm gonna use this roller. What I love about this roller is that it leaves no lines, no marks, but I'm gonna give you a couple of tips when you use it. So, another fun little trick. If you run out of a tray liner with your tray, I just grab a plastic bag and put it over top. So I'm gonna pour the paint in there. Yeah, <laughs> one of the best rollers ever, absolutely. So I'm just gonna pour some in here. This is Paisley, super pretty blue color, has a little hint of gray to it. It's one of our brand new um, 11 colors that are hitting store shelves. 
on the 17th of July. So I'm gonna put my roller in. I wanna soak the roller, and then I wanna kinda take off some of the excess. You don't wanna have too much paint on your roller. That's definitely quite a lot. But because I'm working on bare wood, it's very, very porous. So it's actually gonna soak in really well to the wood. Whereas if I was working on a really shiny surface, that would be a little bit problematic because it would slide a little bit more uh, and you wouldn't want as much on there. So I decided to use a roller because this is quite a large piece and I don't know, I like to get things done quickly. So I thought, why not roll this on today? You can kind of get into some of the corners with the roller as well. And it just, the coverage on this is gonna be so good. Now again, because this is a porous wood, you're going to uh, probably need two coats. It's gonna dry super, super fast. You don't need to get into all these areas. I'm actually gonna use a brush to get into here. But what I like about using this roller, especially on flat surfaces, is you can cover a lot very, very quickly. So you can get a job done in not a crazy amount of time. I definitely recommend rolling with the grain. That is important. But look at this coverage, just stunning. You can see how quickly it's drying here. Totally normal. There we go. Now you wanna give it about 20 to 30 minutes between coats. On a day like today where it's bare wood, the paint is soaking up into it really quickly. Um, it's pretty dry outside here. The humidity is not too high. I can probably get away with putting a second coat on within about half an hour's time, especially because it's bare wood. If this was a previously coated finish, I would say, no, give it, give it about two hours if you can between coats. That's kind of your, your best case scenario there. And, uh, but I kind of like to just push the limits a little bit. I like to push the limits because I want to know what's going to happen with it. I did not defuzz this roller. Great question because um, it's lint free, essentially this roller. So there is like nothing on it. It's a beautiful roller to use. And I find I don't need to de-lint this one at all. You'll also find on this one that the nap is really, really low. So I'll show you a nice close up of this. So I'll do it on this, this one here. It's very low nap. It doesn't hold you know, too much paint, which is really great. So you'll still be able to get your job done really quickly, but it's not going to hold too much so that you're getting lines and excess paint everywhere. Yay. Because da, 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 da. Yeah, so my mom's on here and she's saying, because I didn't shellac the wood, you're actually gonna see some of those knots come through down the road, which I actually really like. So this is for a cottage space. And I think in a cottage, you can get away with knots and stuff like that. So yeah, it's really cool how you can still see the pattern of the wood in there. Love it so much, it's beautiful. The name of this roller, just for those who are asking, this is a Stallmeister roller here. There we go. And you can get these from our retailers. These are the only rollers that Stallmeister offers, but they do come in different um, sizes as well. So if you're doing like a big kitchen table, they've got really wide sizes, really great for applying the tough coat as well. Really, really excellent. So this is, um, they call it microfiber, but they used to call it micro felt. And it just means that it's so smooth. It leaves literally no lines. I love this for flat surfaces. Really, really great. I'm also going to use this brush. This is called a pointed sash brush. I would say this is an absolute must to have in your toolkit. It's about 20 bucks for a brush like this. It's got a beautiful point on there. And this point is so that you can get into these corners and not have excess paint dripping off. So when I work with this, I like to dip it in about halfway up the brush and sort of knock off the excess paint there. Too much paint on your brush can add extra texture, which you don't want but let the brush do the work for you. So you can see the paint's not dripping off of here, but there's lots of paint inside of this. There we go. All right, so I'm going to just hit this corner here. There we go. And by using just a little bit of paint on there, I'm not getting build up and the pointed sash allows for me to have a beautiful edge without getting excess paint around really wonderful for getting into these particular corners. 
I hope you can hear me okay. I don't have a microphone on, and I know that when I look away from the camera, it can be a little bit difficult to, to uh, hear. There we go. So I've got a little bit too much paint on there, so I'm just gonna wipe it off, get rid of some of that excess there. Dab a little bit more into this corner here. I love, this is just the perfect thing to get into corners because it has such a beautiful point on it. There we go. That's a great question. Are you supposed to wash them before using them? I don't think you're supposed to wash them before using them. I've never done that, but you can definitely throw these, uh, like once you've washed them, you can actually put them in the wash and reuse them over and over again. So these rollers are not sort of a one-time use. They can be used again and again. There we go. Yes, what do you think about this color? This is called Paisley, one of our brand new colors that we've just released. It will be hitting store shelves July 17th across North America and then worldwide after that as well. Yes, I love that tip. Definitely have your favorite Stalmeister brush on hand when you're using a roller because you're always going to need a brush as well at some point um, to knock off any excess and, and uh, smooth it out. And like um, Mary said, for any areas that can't be reached with a roller. So excellent tip. Love that. Love that. All right, I'm just loving this coverage now. It's pretty amazing how the difference in color is between dry and wet. That is very, very good to note because a lot of people will look at the colors. They'll look at it in the container and they'll say, ooh, that's the color I want. But look at how different it looks in the container versus wet versus dry. All right, so it's always important to test your colors, make sure that you are happy with the color in your lighting. We have amazing little tester sizes right here that you can grab to test any of the colors. And this will actually paint quite a, quite a fair bit as well. All right, so I'm gonna keep rolling this here, using a fair bit of paint on this bare wood because it's just drinking it up beautifully, beautifully, beautifully. I love this color. Oh my goodness. The coverage on this is so stunning. It's just beautiful, beautiful. All right. Yes, it has a slight gray undertone to it, not undertone to it, not too bright. Very, very beautiful. And great question on which size brush I'm using. So this is a size 14. It's a series 2012. So pointed sash and the size is 14 on there. So if you're looking for this one, there are different sizes as well. They go bigger than this too. Uh, this is really great for small detailing. So I really, really uh, like this one. I'll show you there. There's the code on it there. So these can be purchased through your retailers and uh, lots of great information online about how to choose a brush. We have some really great guides on that too. So whether you're working with a flat surface or you have edges you wanna get into, lots of different ways to choose a brush um, based on the project that you are painting. All right, so I, again, I love using the roller when you have large surfaces to paint because you can actually paint them really quickly. I'm going a little slower right now just because I'm on camera, so it's a little harder to, to talk and paint at the same time sometimes. There we go. Hope you can see this all the way up here, yeah. There we go. And let me know if you have any particular paint questions or if you've got a project and you wanna know how to do it. We have over a hundred videos on our YouTube channel. We add a new video every single week with different tips, uh, different types of projects. And we really walk you through how to do all the proper steps. So that way when you're doing your painting, it's gonna last you a very, very long time. And I love that Fusion Metal Paint has a built-in top coat. For me, when I was creating this, it was really important that we made it as simple as possible. You don't need a primer for adhesion. You don't need a top coat. You open the container and you go. It's a really simple, simple uh, product to use. Really user-friendly. If it's your first time painting, you haven't painted before, I promise you, it's easy, easy, easy. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get in here with a brush and I'm gonna finish up the top. I'm not sure if you can see the very top. Nope, you can't, so maybe I'll just leave that for now, but I'll even it out. It's never a good idea to start and stop. You should really even out everything. Hope everyone can hear me okay. I'm working on getting a microphone 
so that way I can be uh, a little bit closer sounding to the microphone on this camera. <laughs> okay, cool. So I'm gonna add a little more paint on here. This is a lot of paint. If you ever have this much paint on your brush, it is probably too much, but because I'm putting it on bare wood, I'm gonna work it around. It's gonna be okay on bare wood. All right, let's get that in there. This is a pointed sash brush. Really great for getting into corners and smoothing out that paint. So you don't get buildup of paint in those corners. This is an absolute must in your painter's toolkit for sure, for sure. Love the pointed sash. And not very expensive, you know, for around the $20 mark, you can get this brush. It's a lifetime brush, you'll have it forever. There is Paisley, you can dip into that. It'll last you forever. So that's really great when you are thinking of investing into tools. The Stallmeister brand is a once in a lifetime investment. I would say there's probably about four or five different brushes I would wanna have or tools that I would want to have. This would be one of them. And then I really like any of the one series brushes. These allow for a very smooth finish. This is an ultra fine um, bristle, so smooth. It leaves literally not a single brush stroke behind. Really, really gorgeous. Yeah, so you can uh, load this up a little bit more because it's bare wood. It's gonna drink up more of that paint. Whereas if this was a previously coated, like if this door was already painted, that I wouldn't be able to use as much paint on my brush because uh, I get more texture. The wood wouldn't be absorbing it because it would already be uh, coated and sealed, so to speak, with another paint. So yeah, if you wanted to paint your door, that was already painted, all you wanna do is clean it with TSP and make sure that there is no um, dirt or dust or grease on that. If there's any wax, you'd wanna remove that before painting with some mineral spirits or odorless solvents. But so many people paint their front doors with fusion mineral paint. It works beautifully outside. You do not need a top coat over it whatsoever. And what a great makeover painting a front door is. It's really quick and easy to do, but the statement and impact that it has is really phenomenal. There we go. What do you guys think? So far so good? I hope so. <laughs> nice. Mary just says her pointed sash still looks like new after three years. Absolutely. You treat this right, you clean it after using it and you use our brush soap, it will be a lifetime brush. Getting into these corners. This has great coverage for one coat on bare wood. Beautiful coverage. This is Paisley, one of our beautiful new blues that we are adding to our collection. There we go. What do you think? Not so bad. I can see a little line there, just brush that out where I had, had maybe a little too much paint on the roller. That can happen sometimes. That's why it's really good to kind of Take a step back and look at your piece to make sure it's looking good. I'm gonna get in here around the handle. This is, this has been a lot of fun. I've been doing a live video every day at the same time for the last uh, five days. This is my sixth one, I think. And we've got another five to go. Yes, and one every day for 11 days. I'm featuring each color. I'm so, so excited about this. Actually, I'm doing 12 videos. Yes, because the first day was the introduction of these colors. There we go. So if you, if you ever have excess on the edges, you'll want to feather it out so that way you don't get any start or stop marks. Um, but you have to be really careful because if you have too much paint on there, you will notice a start and stop mark. So definitely feather, 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 dry brush it out, make sure it's nice and smooth. I'm going to get the very top of this door. I know that, uh, give me one second. Maybe I'll see if there's any questions. Yeah, super fast to paint this door. It is super easy to do. It's interesting. You can see it kind of drying differently all over. Depending on how porous the wood is in certain areas, it'll dry faster. How dense the wood is, it's gonna dry a little uh, slower in some areas. So there we go. Yes, good point. If you have a, a previous coating on a door that you wanna paint, it never hurts to give it a little light sand, and then that way um, you'll take off any gloss that's there. 
I'm just gonna go up and do that little part up there with my pointed sash. Yay! Yes, tell me, what are you gonna paint with this color? I see someone thinking about a bathroom vanity. That would be really nice. All right. I love using this pointed sash for the corners. It gives me full control. I don't get any buildup or excess paint in those corners. You can get these brushes from our retailers. Just head on over to our website, fusionmineralpaint.com. Click on where to buy. And we have over 1,500 retailers around the world in over 30 countries. So there's bound to be a retailer close to you. And lots of them also sell online as well if there isn't one right near you. You can still grab these amazing products. There we go, excellent. Perfect. Yeah, this one door, you know, if you do two coats on it, that'll be perfect. And it doesn't take that long for each coat to dry on bare wood. I could recoat it after 30 minutes, no problem. You could wait up to two hours or so if you want to, or you can come back the next day and do it if you're too busy to do a second coat, no problem. But I wanna show you how much paint I've used to do this door. Keeping in mind that this is a bare porous wood. Porous, bare wood is going to absorb more paint than if it wasn't porous. So like if it was previously painted. Right now, I know you can't see from there, but the paint is to here on the container and it started here. So it's only gone down about a finger's worth for the holder. I've got a little bit at the bottom still to do, but it's amazing how with just this much paint, you get gorgeous coverage. Now I'm gonna do a second coat on this to really give it nice depth and just even it out really beautifully. I can see through a little bit in some areas, but the coverage is really, really nice. So this brush is a Stahlmeister brush. It is called a pointed sash brush. And it's called that because it's got a little point on the end, which makes getting into these corners perfect. You avoid any buildup in those corners with this type of brush. Yes, amazing, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna grab a drink of water. Give me two seconds and feel free to post any questions that you have here because I want to answer them for you. I'm gonna pull this down here so you can see the bottom. I'm gonna keep painting. All right. So for those of you who have been watching me every single day, I am painting a different piece of furniture every day, doing something a little bit different with all the new colors that we have, 11 brand new colors. Love, love, love. If you haven't seen them yet, I'll show them to you super quickly here. These are hitting store shelves this coming weekend. Next Saturday, they're gonna be in stores. 11 beautiful brand new colors. I'm just trying to fan these out nicely so you can see them. 11 gorgeous colors, lots of beautiful neutrals here. Some really fun pops of color. This is such a stunning, stunning collection. I am really, really excited to have everyone be painting with these colors. This is Paisley that we have behind me right here that I've been painting with. So Paisley's in the middle. And you can see compared to Champness, it's just more gray and a little softer. Whereas compared to a true uh, gray color, it has a good depth to it. So this is called Paisley. All right, let's see here. Oh, great, Mary. Mary, you're awesome. You're answering all the questions. I love it. <laughs> Can I use fusion over oil-based stain on a front door? Great question. So for an oil-based stain, um, as long as it was applied quite a while ago, I would give it a light sanding and maybe um, take some mineral spirits and odorless solvent to it just to make sure there's no sticky oil residue on there. So I would remove the oil first, like not remove it, but just like put the mineral spirits on it just to clean it down and then maybe give it a light scuff sand and then you should be fine to go over it with the fusion as long as it looks dull and has some old oil if it was a brand new oil finish it would probably be pretty difficult to get this to to sit onto it oh great question how does it compare to sacred sage give me one second i will grab our beautiful fan deck here if you haven't seen this before this fan deck is available at your retailers it has not only does it have all of our colors in it it also has a whole range of custom colors at the back that you can make. 
So these custom colors are really awesome. So if you're looking for sort of like a, you know, a vibrant green or a chartreuse or anything like that, you just pull that open and you can turn to the back. So this one's called Kelly Green. You would take one part park bench and one part Renfrew, it has the formula on the back and it shows you exactly what the color is gonna be. So there's about 50 different recipes here and all of our colors are on here. Now we're coming out with a, an add-on fan deck and a whole brand new fan deck that has the new colors. Someone asked to see what this looked like against Sacred Sage. So this is Sacred Sage here. And I'll just pull out, there's Paisley. So that's Paisley and there's Sacred Sage. So Sacred Sage is very, very gray and very dark with a hint of green in it. Okay, so can we talk more about tools? If you had to pick three or four, what would you start with for use on general end tables, etc.? Really, really great question. So um, again, the pointed sash, I love this for any kind of detailing. It's absolutely crucial to have for corners and edges so you don't get crazy buildup of paint. Again, also remove excess paint from your brush when you're painting with it to make sure that you're not leaving behind any lines. A brush like this is an absolute must. It's called a spalter brush and it's a little bit more of a higher price point. I think you're gonna pay about 30 to 35, maybe $40 for a brush like this. This brush is the ultimate Cadillac of all of the Stalmeister brushes. It's part of the one series. Any of the one series brushes are phenomenal. You cannot get better than this series. It is the finest synthetic bristles that are out there and it gives you the most beautiful, smooth finish possible. So I definitely encourage you to get one of these. This is really great for tabletops or at like end tables, like you're asking the tops of those to go end to end, it'll be super smooth. Great question. You do not need to put a sealer on top of Fusion Mineral Paint. It has a built-in, very durable top coat in it because of our proprietary resin that we use, a very high-grade acrylic resin, 100% pure acrylic, no vinyl mixed into it, which most other paints do have. Um, so that makes all the difference when you're talking about durability and adhesion. So this paint really is the best of the best. And it took me about two years to develop this paint with a lab to make sure that it was hitting every point that I needed it to hit in terms of open time, flow, how nicely it smooths out, uh, the matte finish, all of those things. So I would get a sash. So if you're looking for top brushes or top tools to have a pointed sash for all those details, and then this one, a, a one series brush, there's a decoration brush or a, a spalter brush. This is really, really awesome. So I, I definitely recommend those two brushes. And then these rollers are a must have as well, especially if you've got large flat surfaces because you can actually finish a, a job very quickly with this. And these are micro felt rollers from Stalmeister. So I definitely recommend this. Now this one here that I'm holding is a size number 14. So it's 2012-14. That's the number on this brush here. It's a pointed sash, 2012-14. This is a perfect size. They come bigger as well if you want, but you definitely don't need to get bigger than this, especially if you're going over here. Someone wants to see a side-by-side -side comparison of Chateau and raw silk. Absolutely, I would love to do that. Give me one second, I will find that right here for you. Okay, so we've got Chateau here. This is a really, really pretty gray, and I'm just gonna grab my fan deck. I'm gonna pull open to raw silk right there. So you will notice raw silk is definitely much lighter, and Chateau has more of a gray tone to it. Really excellent coverage, really, really beautiful. I definitely think if you are painting furniture fairly frequently, this is well worth the investment. They're about $30 in store. You get all of the colors, plus we'll have an add-on coming for all the 11 new colors. Definitely recommend this. So the size of the spalter brush, um, this one is a, oh, I need glasses. Oh my goodness, it's upside down. There we go. So this one is a, I can't see the last time, I think it's 07, but it's a 75 millimeter. So it's, um, there is one a little bit smaller, there's one a little bit bigger, so this is a 75. Any of the spalter brushes are phenomenal. I, I highly encourage them, but the wider you go, the, the better for bigger, larger surfaces. So there's a 100 size, which is just a little bit wider like this. That's really great for large tabletops to go end to end. It's excellent for applying tough coats. So if you do wanna apply a coat like that over top, you can, really, really great. 
Okay, so for those of you just joining me here, this is Paisley that I've been working with behind me. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna throw on a second coat now. It is looking really dry, still a little damp right here. But again, because this is raw bare wood, I'm not worried about anything happening by adding a second coat on a little too soon. If this was a previously coated um, piece of uh, furniture, what could happen if you add a coat too soon is it could reactivate the base layer and kind of just start to remove a little bit of what you just applied. Uh, so it's actually better to wait, you know, the two hours or so that you're supposed to between coats. And I'm gonna smooth that out there. So you kind of want to go in the direction of the wood. There we go. Look at that. Now that is solid, solid coverage with that second coat. Absolutely solid. Beautiful. That first coat, because this bare wood is gonna soak in a little funky. There we go, beautiful, love that. And I've used only maybe about an eighth of the paint so far to paint this door. Your second coat, you're barely gonna use um, much paint because your first coat is what's really kind of soaked in and absorbed into that wood. So it's always gonna take more paint on your first coat. Your second coat won't use hardly as much at all, at all. So now I've got some excess paint in here. I'm gonna get rid of that with my pointed sash brush. I'm not even gonna dip it in. I'm just gonna take that because I saw some excess paint there. Kind of removing it, but spreading it around to get into those corners there. Beautiful, excellent. Love that, gorgeous. Yeah, this pointed sash is phenomenal. So if you're gonna splurge, there's a couple of things I also think that you should have um, just in general for your toolkit. You wanna have, doo -doo -doo, you wanna have our TSP alternative. This is a cleaner. It is really great for prepping your piece of furniture. It is uh, biodegradable, it's concentrated. You take one cap full for a pint of water and you mix that and you can clean a piece of furniture with it. You probably get about 20 pieces of furniture out of one of these bottles, I think it's about $12. So that's a must have. Another thing you should have is our odorless solvent. It helps to get rid of any sticky residue, any wax, anything like that, that may be on your pieces. Um, so those are two must haves. And that also is like maybe $10, it's not very expensive, but those are your two most important prep um, products that you should have. So for about 20 bucks, you're getting two things that are gonna make sure that the paint is gonna adhere to your surface. And then you want a pointed sash brush just to have in your toolkit for little uh, corners like this. This is awesome. This is an oval brush. I'm a big fan of oval brushes. I could actually paint this door with this brush if I wanted to, uh, and it would be actually okay in the corners, but you would have to be uh, very mindful of how much paint you have on your brush. Whereas this really helps you to get into those corners and not have anything excess left around, which is awesome. Then you're gonna wanna grab some rollers. Rollers are really handy to have as well. Um, they just allow you to paint a surface like this really quickly, a nice flat, smooth surface in no time whatsoever. Tabletops, great for applying tough coat as well. And uh, oh, the one series brush, where did I put that? Can't find it right now. I'll find it somewhere, it's gotta be here. Where could it go? Literally, I've gone nowhere. Where's the brush? <laughs> Probably sitting on it. Da, 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 da. Anyhow, the one series brush, beautiful, fine quality. The flat spalter brush is phenomenal. I highly, highly recommend that one. So for about $100, you could really set yourself up with some really beautiful tools and items. And I think maybe what I'll do is maybe I'll do a blog of like my top tools that every beginner painter should have because I think it's really important to have the right prep tools and uh, it just makes your job so much easier. I'm gonna get into these corners and then I'm gonna roll out the top. Gosh, it's honestly so perfect already. That second coat goes on just incredibly. I don't sand between coats because I don't need to do that, but because it is bare wood, um, sometimes with bare wood, the grain can be opened a little bit more and you will notice a little bit of a texture of the wood because the, the, uh, the grain has been raised a little bit. So you could absolutely take like a finishing sanding pad, like an 800 grit, or a thousand grit and just go over one, two, three times, like ch -ch -ch, as if you're wiping it down with a rag. And that's it, that's it. Yes, do a video of the must haves, yes. Okay, I will do a video of my favorite tools and I'll give you different budget ranges. So if you've got like, 
you know, 50 to $75 that you want to invest. I'll show you the best tools and bang for your buck there. Um, and then if you really want uh, to spend a little bit more on splurge and have like, you know, if you're a furniture flipper or you're painting several pieces of furniture, like a $150 budget range, I'll put something together for that as well. And again, keep in mind, these will last forever. You can actually reuse these rollers over and over and over again. You can wash them. I know um, one of our retailers in the UK, she washes them and then she puts them into a bag, like one of those little mesh bags and throws them into her laundry all on its own and washes them out and they wash out perfectly beautifully. So yeah, you may be spending, you know, $12 on two rollers, but it's gonna last you many, many, many times, many uses. Uh, so it's really, really worth it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's do another coat here. Gosh, the coverage. I just love what a second coat does to a piece. Now, if you're working with a light color, you may need two to three coats, um, like, like a casement or a Victorian lace. A white color could use three coats, sometimes four. Like if you're going over a really, really dark surface, it's not unknown to be four coats, um, but it really depends how much paint you're using, the application, how much pressure you're applying. I can usually do it in three coats, but some people may need four, uh, but you really shouldn't need more than that because that's quite a lot. So you may want to consider um, adding a color like a gray underneath, like a sterling gray, to really help out with that sort of transition of color. Now, these pints are about $25 a pint, really inexpensive for what you can do with it. And I am able to paint a whole door. I haven't poured any more paint into this container, by the way, so far, and I'm still using it. Gosh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tilt this camera so you can kind of see how much paint I got in here. So really, I barely used any paint. I hope you can see it barely use any paint whatsoever to paint this door. So you will have access. You can absolutely paint quite a few um, pieces of furniture with just one pint. So a lot of people ask me, oh, okay, it's a really small container, so that must be really expensive to paint furniture with. But the way that I formulated this with the high, high quality ingredients, a little goes a long way. A feature wall, if you're gonna paint a feature wall with one of these, one pint, 10 by 10, almost always, you can get that. So, oh, when it's opened many times, does it thicken? Yeah, not so much, not with the way that we formulated this. I would say, if you get paint like this around the edges, take a, um, take a baby wipe and just clean that off, or a wet rag and clean that off, so that when you put your lid back on, it's not gonna stay stuck, because that's what happens is when the paint gets there and it dries, that lid's gonna stick on really hard. You can actually just like turn it upside down and bang it and it'll loosen it up, no problem. But no, the paint inside shouldn't really get thick. It should stay pretty much the same consistency. You could add a little water if you wanted to. I would avoid adding water because now you're playing with the formula of the paint and we have it perfectly formulated for durability. So if you add more water to this, you're gonna make your paint less durable. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm gonna go up there and finish because you can kind of see where it needs a little bit of an extra coat way way up there All right Thank you so much for spending this afternoon with me here. This is super fun There we go It's really hot in here right now Okay, what time is it? 1244 these lives. Oh my goodness. I was like, oh, I'll keep my live to 30 minutes and here we are It's 45 minutes long already <laughs> But there's just like so much to share with you and I have so many tips that I like to share and I know there's people of all different um, you know levels of painting experience here so I really like to touch on a little bit for everyone so if you're more of an advanced painter um, you may find me a little bit boring <laughs> but I find there's always a little tip here and there a little takeaway that you can get I'm gonna just do the top here hopefully this is not in the way roll out this top, get a second coat on this baby, and then we are done, good to go. So as you can see, it's dried within about half an hour each coat, which is great. And then I'm putting the second coat on right away and nothing's lifting up from below, so I'm not reactivating anything because this is bare wood. There we go. Where's everyone watching from? If you're just tuning in now, we have people from all over the world at the beginning. 
We had Portugal, we had Iceland, we had all over the United States and Canada, the UK, all over. Just amazing. And this paint is available essentially worldwide. If you don't have a nearby retailer, you're welcome to order online. Go to our website and click on where to buy and it will show you your nearest dealer there. Okay, so for about maybe a sixth of a pint, I'm able to do two coats on this door. That is pretty good if you ask me. <laughs> really good value with what you can do with this paint. Now we've got 11 brand new colors that we've just added that are hitting store shelves July 17th. I'm very, very excited for that. That's in North America. So if you're outside of North America, very shortly thereafter, it will be hitting store shelves in the UK, all across Europe, Australia, and uh, some other beautiful countries as well. We've got Italy, over 30 different countries. So this paint is available for you no matter where you are. Awesome. Illinois and Melbourne, Australia, New Jersey, BC, Canada. Wow, wow, wow. California. If you're just joining me now, don't worry. We're going to be putting this on repeat so you can watch it later. I gave some really great tips and tools for what you want to use for getting into corners and edges when you're painting doors like this, why you should use a sash brush and always have that as part of your toolkit. And I showed off our brand new 11 colors that are hitting store shelves next Saturday. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. <laughs> we've been doing such a big lead up for this launch and we've got influencers that have been working with these colors and they're showing off the real beauty of them. But you can head on over to our YouTube channel. We are premiering a new color every single day. You can see a video of it in action, really get a true feel for the color because we do color comparisons as well. If you know some of our other colors, we show you what it looks like against those. So yeah, this has been super, super fun. Okay, so just to recap, I put two coats of this gorgeous paisley color on the door here. It's looking really, really great. This is still wet, that's dry. It's all gonna even out really beautifully. And I don't need to put a top coat on it. This is done. As soon as I've, as soon as it's dry, it's ready to go. I can hang this door up where it's going and then we're all good. We're done. So that's how easy it is. Now, if I wanted to not have the knots show through down the road, I would have spot primed those with a shellac based primer. Otherwise, I don't mind the knots coming through. So I didn't have to do any prep at all. It wasn't dirty. There's no dirt on it. I painted two coats and we're done. I use this amazing roller from Stalmeister. So this is one of these beautiful micro felt rollers. I definitely recommend these ones. You can use them again and again. I will do a video for you and a blog on my top tips. And if you've got like 50 to $75 that you can spend, the absolute must have tools. And also um, if you got $150, I'll show you the really, really nice stuff that you can get because I find sometimes investing a little bit more money really helps with the outcome. And uh, if you're a furniture refinisher and flipper, you can definitely uh, invest in the ones, the one series from Stallmeister you cannot go wrong with. It is absolutely incredible. But all of my Stallmeister tools, these are really the Cadillac of all the brushes out there. They really are the best. Yes, you can, you can spot prime the knots. You absolutely can. And um, you'll wanna put a couple of coats of paint on though, because it might look a little uneven if you just put one coat over top over an area that was spot primed, it might look a little bit uneven because it's absorbing differently. But once you get enough coats on there, it'll even it all out. Can you put the paint in a sprayer? That's a really, really good question. So we have a lot of people that do spray this paint. You have to wear the proper mask and protect your lungs. It's really important to do that because once you aerate paint, there are things that can go into your lungs that are not great for it, but it's perfectly fine to use like this. So a lot of people do spray it. You don't add water to it. A lot of people love the Wagner sprayers. They're really beautiful. Just make sure that you use a proper mask or paint spraying. That's really, really important. Like a, a proper respirator, not just a little mask. All right. Uh, I want to use your wood panel stamp. Da, da, da. Oh, I'm not really sure what that question is. Sorry, I won't be able to answer that one for you. Please show it completely dry later. Absolutely. I will for sure. 
I'll take an after photo of it done and I'll post it up onto our stories, onto Instagram and our stories on Facebook. So stay tuned for that. Head on over to our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe because we do brand new tutorials every single week there. We're doing a live every single day here with you. So bring your paint questions. I love answering them. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> oh yeah, great question. Do you need to buy the black roller handle? It will work on the yellow one, um, but this one's even better. Like it, it fits your hand so beautifully. So I would say if you can invest in this, this is not an expensive roller. And again, you can use it again and again. You can still fit this on. It's just not as optimal on the yellow handles that we have as well. Yes, I think that's it. I think that's it. All right, everyone. Have a really fantastic rest of your day. I hope you have a beautiful Sunday and uh, I'll be back live with you tomorrow. We're featuring a whole new color every single day. 11 brand new colors just released, hitting store shelves July 17th. Check out your nearest retailer. You can get in some pre-orders from them. Get your wish list going of what colors you want. Leave a comment with what your favorite color is so far or where you see using Paisley in your home. Love, love to know. And thank you all so much for joining me here. So wonderful to see so many people here from all around the world. Thank you so much. And I hope you paint it beautiful. Enjoy your rest of your weekend. Bye, everyone.